Hi, this is Charlie giving you Monday's market commentary. I hope you're very well. Um, I'll just first off, um, the BBC were over again last week doing this uh, the final bit of filming for this documentary. The documentary is going to be out, they tell me that it's going to be out in September or October. So um, they don't get the actual scheduling slot until um, probably sometime in August that we'll find out when, it, when it's actually going to be slotted in. But this is a documentary on traders, and so um, which I'm, feature, I'm going to be part of. Um, so <clears throat> it's a two-part documentary um, following the lives of um, traders, whether they're city traders in, in part one or traders who trade for themselves um, in part two. And I believe there's about five different traders in, in uh, that, that second episode, myself included, and uh, one trader who's a raw beginner, so they wanted to show someone who's new to it all. Um, and then a couple of others, a few others as well. So it should it should make for a, uh, an interesting show. So um, watch this space. Um, we keep it um, updated on Facebook, but I appreciate not all, everyone is on Facebook. But um, but it should make for a, quite an interesting documentary actually to to see the different views of different traders and and all of that. Um, obviously, you never know how quite how they're going to. Uh, the bits that they're going to edit out. <laughs> um, there's been a, hu a lot of filming. I've done what four, four full days of filming with them, and I'll probably be about five or ten minutes in the actual documentary. But um, so we'll see what they actually choose to put in. But uh, nevertheless, um, it should be good for the trading community. Right. Um, I started off here with the S and P, and um, let's just move this forward. So again, I've got it on a weekly chart here. And if I just zoom out first of all, we can see we're in this wonderful trend channel off of the lows and um, off the lows back in sorry 2009. So, so you can see that. Um, and obviously we're sort of uh, I don't know where, whereabouts in that range we are, but um, we're not at the upper trend channel line. It's interesting actually. I put the same trend channel on the futures, and the we're right banging up against the um, the upper trend channel line on the futures on the weekly charts. So we are at some resistance, and that's probably why we're seeing this the S and P effectively flat for what um, the last year now. <laughs> it looks on a weekly chart, um, so it doesn't look like it's sorry last year, the last few months. So on the uh, on the weekly charts, um, so it's not a date, it's not a, a monthly chart. Um, so uh, what I'm interested in with the S and P is to see if <coughs> excuse me if we are going to manage to break up to new highs. Uh, and if we if we can break up to new highs, then I will be looking for um, some sort of um, key reversal because I do think that we've got um, waning momentum on the these higher time frames uh, in this market, and and so therefore the potential for um, you know a decent pullback. Um, so I don't know whether it's going to whether it will come from from this sort of area that we're currently in or we need to push up to another high again yet but the momentum does seem to be waning so um i guess we'll have to see um but um that's what i'm looking at keep going to be keeping my eye out for um i think on the, if we come to the daily charts we we've, we've just had a, a couple of days down really on the S&P so it's 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 too soon to really tell um i know there's people out there already getting bearish so it's actually a little bit too soon to say to, to say actually when you're looking at the cash market, but certainly if we went up, made a key reversal or something like that, or or we had um, breadth divergences, which we haven't really got just yet um, at these highs. But if we were to go up to new highs and that sort of information was to um, unfold, then I think there could be a really good um, sort of positional. Um, short trade um, in play uh, that, that could be taken there. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. But it could take months that that particular trade. But that's something that I'm going to be looking out for. What happens if the the S&P starts to break down from here? Yeah, I mean if we if it starts to break down from here, then um, I can certainly have a have a look at that S&P anyway because it doesn't have to go to new highs. Uh, and if it does start to break down, then we can see that um, there's some scope down to this lower trend trend channel line, um, some decent scope. So um, that's where I just thought I'd bring to you some of your attention, um, just rather than just looking at Forex all the time, um, have a look at the S&P this week. So I shall leave that with you, or shall I? Mm, shall I have a look at some of the currencies? Actually, let's have a look at a couple of them as well. Um, right, no, I don't need to look at the pound Aussie. Let's have a look at the euro dollar. All right, the euro dollar, obviously, it did what the best part of... Uh, 350 pip move to the downside, so it's, it's you know it's put reversal type um, candle in down here, 
Um, I, ultimately, I think so many people are are probably bearish on on the euro dollar right now, um, but that doesn't mean to say it can't have some sort of um, a bit more of a bounce. It's it's very weak so far, so we'll, we'll we'll see if we can get some sort of bounce in in that euro dollar, then um, I wouldn't surprise me. And so where would where would likely resistance come in? I think some somewhere like the daily twenty one um, would be a good resistance zone for the euro dollar. That would allow it to do a half decent bounce from a Fibonacci perspective, um, and that that could create um, some decent resistance up there. So I'd look towards that area, or, and then potentially this this old trend channel line. Right, I shall leave it at that. Oh no, we'll have a look at the pound dollar as well actually, um, because. Um, there's some pound news. It's a fairly quiet week this week from a news perspective. It's not too too busy, but there's a little bit of pound news, um, inflation reports and stuff. So, um, so what are we looking for on the pound? Well, the pound has technically um, held up much better than than that of the euro. So, what we really need to see is a close above the a strong close above the daily 21. It, if we can do that and, and surpass it by a decent amount, then we could be looking at a, a run back up to 170. Otherwise, um, if we don't, then um, we are below that 21 at the moment. Any movement up to it then um, is potentially just um, noise on the long side before ultimately the pound rolls back over and comes down to test this lower trend line. So bear in mind, keep that trend line on your charts because if it does start to roll over, that will be where it's, um, it's aiming for. Right, I shall leave that with you and be back on Friday.